You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, voted best of Las Vegas. Give them a call, 702-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Hi, it's Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. I'm Missy Kohler. Welcome to News 25. A two-vehicle crash happened earlier today on Highway 160 at Dandelion. Anthony Roberts has more on this story. Jason Ernest of Mount West Lawyers. Don't be bullied by insurance companies. Call me, 775-727-9500. A mid-morning collision between a pearl-colored Chevy Tahoe and a silver Chrysler unfolded today at the intersection of Dandelion Street and Highway 160, leaving one driver injured and both vehicles with moderate damage. According to the officers at the scene, the incident occurred at approximately 10 a.m. when the Chevy Tahoe, attempting to make a left-hand turn onto Highway 160, was struck on its front left side by a southbound silver Chrysler. The impact resulted in significant damage to the entire right side of the Chrysler and the front left side of the Tahoe. Emergency services were quick to respond with personnel from Nye County Sheriff's Office, the Highway Patrol, and Prompt Fire and Rescue rushing to the scene to assist. The driver of the Silver Chrysler, who bore the brunt of the collision, was promptly transported to Desert View Hospital for medical attention to address her injuries. Traffic was temporarily slowed down to one lane during the initial investigation. International mediators are struggling to extend the ceasefire agreement between Israel and Hamas. Meanwhile, Palestinians have been facing an uptick in reported diseases. Here's RJ Camacho with the report. Palestinians within the Gaza Strip have been reported to be in fear of the resumption of the war once the ceasefire agreement ends. The ceasefire agreement, which was initially meant to end on Monday of this week, was extended two extra days up till today. However, as of reporting, it is up in the air if another extension will occur, or if war will rear its ugly head yet again. Palestinians have a right to be afraid of the return of the war as well, considering that the damage it caused has displaced an unprecedented amount of Palestinians. Palestinians, as well as the death toll having been enormous. The last reported death toll was of 13,300 Palestinians. When you add the 1,200 Israelis who died in the initial attack that sparked the war, the death toll is 14,500. International mediators are currently working to extend the ceasefire agreement in order for more hostage exchanges to take place. Reportedly, Hamas is expected to release another group of hostages later today. Despite Israel's vow to resume the war in order to end Hamas's 16-year rule of the Gaza Strip, the country has been facing pressure at an international scale to extend the truce. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke on how the Biden administration hopes to see a new extension for the ceasefire agreement. He went on to state that, looking at the next couple of days, we will be focused on doing what we can to extend the pause so we can continue to get more hostages out and more humanitarian assistance in. He added on, stating that the U.S. and NATO plans to discuss with Israel how to achieve its goals of crushing Hamas while both sustaining and increasing the humanitarian assistance for Palestinian civilians, especially the minimization of any further suffering done unto the people. Meanwhile, Palestinians are facing a new issue other than the war. According to the World Health Organization, experts have recorded what they call a deeply alarming uptick in respiratory infections, diarrheal diseases, meningitis, and other illnesses in recent days. This comes as well when fewer than half of Gaza's hospitals have only now become operational, also according to the World Health Organization. Dr. Rick Peepercorn, a representative for both the West Bank and Gaza, spoke at a press briefing earlier today stating that the agency has recorded approximately 111,000 cases of respiratory illness, as well as an alarming amount of cases of diarrhea, skin rash, jaundice, and chicken pox going to the tens of thousands. This has occurred in the last two weeks. Dr. Peepercorn was quoted stating that, not only has Gaza lost its hospital capacity, it has also lost its ability to confirm even the most basic of diseases. He continued on noting that without this capability, there is now a blind spot where they have a huge risk of epidemic diseases. Approximately 50 patients have been transferred 
to other medical facilities outside of Gaza. He also stated that before the war occurred, Gaza had about 3,500 hospital beds, but that number has now been reduced to approximately 1,500. Dr. Michael Ryan a World Health Organization emergencies chief, chimed in as well, stating that Egypt made approximately 11,000 beds available for those in Gaza who require medical evacuation. Tens of thousands of doctors and nurses would be available to help as well, Dr. Ryan added. He went on to state that, Gaza has the health workers and the expertise to deliver health, but we don't know what's going to happen in the next 24 hours. Many of these hospitals we're supporting are potentially in harm's way. A Pahrump man jabbing cars on Highway 160 leads to an arrest when drugs are found in his jacket. On November 26th, Nye County Sheriff deputies were dispatched to the area of Highway 160 and East Wilson Road in Pahrump in reference to a person with a knife. According to the report, a Hispanic adult male wearing a black jacket and gray pants was walking in the street on Highway 160 jabbing at cars with a knife. The reporting party, who was exiting from the McDonald's parking lot to turn onto Highway 160, when the Hispanic male, later identified as Steve Garcia, approached the reporting party's vehicle with a knife. Steve Garcia allegedly reached into the open driver's side window with the knife and attempted to stab the reporting party. Then, Steve Garcia ran down Highway 160 and threw the knife in the Wells Fargo parking lot. Deputies located Steve in the area. Steve Garcia admitted to officers that he had a knife, but would not elaborate on what else had occurred. Sheriff deputies later obtained a statement from an eyewitness who said Steve Garcia was walking northbound in the southbound travel lanes, jabbing at vehicles that were passing by. Deputies eventually found a used glass smoking pipe with a bulb at the end that had white and burnt residue and was located inside Steve's jacket. This pipe is commonly used to smoke methamphetamine and is called called a meth pipe. Based off numerous reporting party statements, Steve Garcia was taken into custody and transported to the Nye County Detention Center and booked on the following charges. Assault with a deadly weapon, burglary of a motor vehicle, use, possession of drug paraphernalia, and use or under the influence of a controlled substance. According to the declaration of arrest, Steve Garcia was at the detention center when he eventually admitted he had used the controlled substance approximately two days ago and consented to a blood draw. A man is arrested after reportedly threatening to kill someone and endangering three children and a woman. Here's RJ Camacho with the story. On November 23rd, officers responded to a report of domestic violence. According to the arrest report, a young girl had called the Nye County Sheriff's Office and alleged that a man, later identified as Robert Hampton, was trying to kill another person. During the call, the alleged victim and three children were locked in the bedroom and Hampton was allegedly attempting to break the door down. Officers were also advised that Hampton had allegedly shot a gun off in the bathroom. Robert Hampton had allegedly fled from the residence prior to officers' arrival. Officers then made contact with a distraught woman and three children. While officers conducted a welfare check of the woman and the three children, they reported observing a broken bedroom door, a large hole in the center of said door they stated to be consistent with being punched, and blood all over the same door. Inside the room, officers observed more blood spatter on the walls and drops of blood on the bedroom carpet as well as a spent 9mm bullet casing on the master bathroom's countertop. Above the casing was a hole consistent with a 9mm round, alongside with multiple other holes consistent with a bullet's trajectory. Officers then recovered the spent bullet. They then conducted an interview with the woman who stated that Hampton and her had returned home from Thanksgiving dinner and were getting ready for bed. The three children were reported to be in the bedroom as well. The woman then stated that Hampton had allegedly become irate speaking about the woman flirting with someone else. At this time, Hampton was accused of going into the closet to grab the woman's 9mm semi-automatic pistol. The woman then attempted to get Hampton to leave, to which he allegedly refused. According to the declaration of arrest, Hampton stated that he was going to kill someone. A struggle ensued when the woman pushed Hampton out of the bedroom to protect both her and the kids from him. He allegedly then began punching the door, yelling that he just wanted his keys. He was then let in to grab his 
his keys. However, Hampton allegedly broke the door off the hinges and wiped his blood all over an unknown person's face. When Robert went into the bathroom to wash off the blood, he allegedly then pulled out the gun, aimed it at the woman, and then instead fired around into the ceiling. The woman then defended herself via striking Hampton until he fled in his truck, firearm in tow. Officers later located Robert Hampton, and he was then taken into custody. He was arrested and booked into the Nye County Detention Center under the charges of assault with a deadly weapon, child abuse or neglect and endangerment, discharging a gun within a structure within a prohibited area, and grand larceny of a gun. We'll be back with Wanted Wednesday just after the break. Stick around. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by John Air. For all your heating and air conditioning needs, call 775-751-2372. Welcome back. Ashley Burnell is still wanted by Nye County Sheriff's on multiple warrants. Burnell's warrants include identity theft and narcotics charges. He also has multiple warrants in other states. Anyone with information on Burnell's location should contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 775-751-7000. Google's first geothermal plant is up and running right here in Nevada. Mikey Ruhan has the details. An advanced geothermal project has begun pumping carbon-free electricity onto the Nevada grid to power Google data centers here. Google announced on Tuesday, Fervo Energy, the international energy agency, has long projected geothermal could be used as a serious solution to climate change. It said in a 2011 roadmap document that geothermal could reach some 3.5% of global electricity generation annually by 2050, avoiding almost 800 megatons of carbon carbon dioxide emissions per year, but that potential has been mostly unrealized up until now. Today's announcement could mark up a turning point. Fervo is using the first pilot to launch other projects that will deliver far more carbon-free electricity to the grid. It's currently completing initial drilling in southwest Utah for a 400 megawatt project. Google and Fervo Energy started working together in 2021 to develop next-generation geothermal power. Now that the site near Winnemucca, Nevada is operating commercially, it's three wells are sending about 3.5 megawatts to the grid. The data centers require more electricity than that, so Google signed other agreements for solar and storage too. It has two sites in Nevada, one near Las Vegas and the other near Reno. Google announced back in 2020 that it would use carbon-free energy every hour of every day, wherever it operates, by 2030. Many energy experts believe huge companies like Google can play a catalytic role in accelerating clean energy. Cuddling up next to a fireplace in the winter can be cozy, but your fireplace must be kept maintained to keep it safe to prevent house fires. Here are some helpful tips. Here is a few tips on how to keep your fireplace in top shape this winter season. First, make sure the fireplace is cleaned of dirt and ashes that have built up over time. You can also clean the soot and stains from the fireplace, but wait for about 12 hours after extinguishing all embers before cleaning using soap and water. Check chimneys. Open the damper and look inside of it with a flashlight, making sure nothing is blocking the chimney, such as leaves or any animals that may have gotten in. Never use a fireplace for longer than five hours at a time. Do not use water to extinguish fires. Water can turn ashes into a paste that will be difficult to remove. Let the fire die down or pour some sand over it. Burning clean wood will prevent the buildup of creosote a black film from smoke residue. This can cause very dangerous fires that can be detrimental to your home and health. Here's Mikey with your look at sports. Time now for your News 25 look at sports. Golden Knights in Canada. Monday in Calgary against the Flames. Losing in overtime 2-1. to one. Then on to Edmonton last night. Losing in a shootout against the Oilers. 5-4. to four. They'll try their luck in Vancouver tomorrow. With the Canucks for the battle of first place. 
A bye week for the Raiders. They welcome the Minnesota Vikings on December 10th. Las Vegas has a new volleyball team, the Vegas Thrill. They're part of the Pro Volleyball Federation. They revealed their logo and their home court, which will be at Dollar Loan Center in Henderson. The 2024 big league lineup has been announced. Milwaukee Brewers versus the Oakland A's, March 8th and 9th, 2024 at Las Vegas Ballpark. UNLV will host Boise State this Saturday in the Mountain West Football Championship at Allegiant Stadium. And Prim Valley Trojan basketball season kicks off tonight. Girls are at Foothill High School and boys are at Bonanza High School. And happy birthday to Z. That's your look at sports on News 25. When we come back, we'll tell you about a cute dog named Sissy looking for a forever home, and we'll also have weather. Stay with us. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by... Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Thanks for staying with us. Pat Lemming from Never Forgotten Animal Society is here to tell us about a cute dog named Sissy. Today's Rescue a Pet segment is brought to you by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi everyone, this is Pat with Never Forgotten Animal Society at 3091 North David Street off of Belle Vista in the north part of Perum. Sissy comes from a home of five dogs. She is used to being uh, held and loved and cuddled and being in someone's lap. She loves nothing better than to give kisses and hugs. And she has um, been spayed. She is housebroken. She um, has her microchip, all of her vaccinations, and rabies certificates. So if you're interested in a sweet, loving, kind girl, this is your girl. Um, her name is Sissy, and she is about four years old. Our hours are Monday through Saturday from 10 until 5 every day. And um, no appointment is necessary. You're welcome to come in and see any of our animals uh, at any time. No appointments necessary. We're open from 10 until 5 every day um, except Sunday. And um, you're welcome to come on in and visit with her and her sister. And we've got her brother and a whole bunch more. We also have about 18 puppies. So if you're interested in a puppy, come on in. We highly recommend that you do not offer uh, puppies as presents to people or kittens during the holiday season. Um, it has been our experience that if that happens, then what ends up happening is they all come back to us, or most of them come back to us with by the new year. So if you're looking for a companion for yourself, please come on in. We have a lot of small dogs that are just waiting and anxious to go home. We have uh, medium-sized dogs as well. So come on in. We're open Monday through Saturday from 10 until 5 every day. Our number is 537 86 Seven four, and this is Sissy, and she will make you a wonderful companion. Thank you. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Going outside for today's Learner and Row Weather Cam, isn't that pretty? It's been chilly lately. I wonder how long that's going to continue. John will be up next with the weather forecast. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios all up and down the Ace Country Radio Network. And today on a Wagon Like a Dog Wednesday, it's uh, kpvm.tv worldwide. Check out Fernley at 46 degrees, 45 on Fallon's back door. Carson City saw 46. They kind of made a little weather sandwich up there, didn't they? Mar marching in lockstep for the most part. Tonopah, cool spot at 43. We got 45 in Goldfield. Beatty, a beautiful 56. 61 in Amargosa. That's as warm as it gets up here, folks. And then uh, Las Vegas, 58. 
little chilly poolside. Death Valley hit 68 and here in the Paradise Prump. Let's take a look. Our current temperature, 53 degrees. Very nice. Uh, high today of 60. Now we're just starting to cool off. Uh, sun rose this morning at 634. Set this evening at 429. We missed it as it goes. I gave it a little wave in those partly cloudy skies because those uh, uh, sunset outstanding tonight. Heading to a low of 30 degrees. That's a little bit chilly. Might want to put on a sweater. And uh, let's check out the rest of this week. 44% humidity. Yeah, we're going to see some clouds in the sky, and they're going to be there for a while. Uh, in fact, we might even see some rain on Friday. Um, check out Sunday. Things are going to be drying out. We'll have a clear sky, uh, sunshine, and uh, low winds uh, to start the week. And temperatures in the low 60s. That sounds like not too bad I proposition. What do you say, baby? All right. Wagon Wednesday. Wagon Wednesday. Back to the desk. Thanks, John and Maisie. Well, that'll wrap it up for us tonight here at News 25. We thank you so much for watching. I'm Missy Kohler, and I hope you have a great night.